Hi paper crafters, welcome to another Design with Joe video. I'm Joanne Rogers, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Central Alberta, Canada, and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. Today I want to show you how to make an adorable little treat holder, one that perfectly fits two of the Mercy chocolates. And we're using the gingerbread and peppermint bundle from the 2021 July to December holiday catalog. So this is super cute and it's actually fairly quick to put together. So let's get started. We're gonna start with a piece of real red and this size is two and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And we're gonna score it in a bunch of different places and I'm using my Simply Scored tool. When I have some multiple uh, score lines, I like to use the Simply Scored mainly because I can use my uh, markers at the top. So we're gonna score this in two different ways. Let me bring in the template to show you. So we're going to score it at half an inch on the short side and two and a quarter. And then we're going to turn it and we're going to score it at, let me turn it this way. We're going to score it at one inch, three and a half and four. And then there's a little trick I want to show you for the six and a half. So at one, uh, sorry, at a half, on the short end and so I pull down a little bit and then I'm going to move my fingers up here because this is a smaller piece of paper two and a quarter and then I'm going to turn that and I'm going to score it at one inch and I'm going to score it at three and a half and four and for the six and a half I only want to score up to that line I've already scored so six and a half now rather than trying to figure out what the line is down here you can turn this around 180 degrees and then one and a quarter okay so just a little trick there so that's what you're left with and what we're going to do is we are going to cut it and cut some pieces out so you're going to pull in your paper snips and we want to cut straight lines here and I'll just pull this over so we want to cut away anywhere that has that diagonal stripe and where we have the straight lines is where we want to cut into so we are going to cut away really all of the corners here. We're gonna cut into this to create a little flap and we're gonna cut this corner away too. So you wanna use some nice sharp scissors when you're doing this. If you are cutting a smaller, this is a smaller area, so my paper snips work great here because they're nice and sharp and they have a shank that's long enough really to get in there. So you can make up a bunch of these and then just uh, put them together really quickly. So those are done. Now what we want to do, I like to do all of my cutting before I do any of my burnishing. So now I'm going to fold all of my score lines into the middle and just burnish them up with your bone folder so that they have a nice crisp fold on them. Turn it around here. I'm going to fold everything into the middle. So this one over. And then over again. And then this last piece, you can fold it into the middle. We're actually going to end up folding that back on itself. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to glue this. And what we want is the flaps are going to have glue on the outside. And these flaps here are going to have glue on the inside. So it's going to fold up like this to give you an idea of where we're headed. Okay, so glue here. And I like to use liquid glue for this. So liquid glue on your tabs. Again, on the back side of the tabs and here on the inside of the tab. And this is gonna fold around from the front to the back so we have a nice clean edge. Now, before we do that, I almost forgot, we have to pull in some of our designer paper. So this is our designer paper, gingerbread and peppermint. And this has so many different designs. Look at all the different designs that you get. 12 different designs, double-sided, so really 24. Lots of them have nice big shapes that you can cut out for things. We're using the patterns a little bit more. And we center on real red, old olive. There's early espresso in here as well as cinnamon cider. So a really great little package for uh, our six by six. So we wanna take three pieces, these we'll talk about later, so three pieces, and they can be all different pieces like me or they can be all the same, it's up to you. So this piece is three quarters by one and a half, then we have one that is one and a half by two, and one and a half by two and a quarter. And this is the one, the largest one is the one that we wanna work with right away. So 
So I'm going to pull in my silicone craft sheet because I find that my stamp and seal tends to run a little bit better on this sheet. So I definitely want to have this side be showing. So I'm just going to run a little bit. You don't have to really go around all the corners, I guess, but I am. And then you're going to glue that down on that piece that's sticking up a little bit. And you should be able to get a nice little edge around there. And you don't have to go all the way to the bottom. You don't want to waste your paper. So now that we have that, I'm going to take that back piece and I'm going to fold it up and I'm going to take it and so that it's on a flat surface and just set, uh, set down so that the edges on the bottom are flat against the table and take those tabs. And now because that liquid glue has actually sat there for a little bit, it's nice and sticky. So now take the front and you're going to fold it right over those edges and it should fit in there perfectly. Okay, so bring it right around, have it come right to the edge as much as possible. Okay, and just take your bone folder and maybe go right in there and make sure the tabs are right up against the sides. Just give it a good little squish there. So now what we wanna do is take those other two pieces of designer paper. One is going to go on the bottom and then one is going to go on the little flap. So I'm gonna take that and also put that on with my seal. And you want to take this one and have it come down close to the bottom. So you're going to have about a 1 8 inch uh, red all the way around. And we're going to cover up that spot. So this last little guy. And you can certainly use liquid glue to put these on if you like. It's totally up to you. Whatever is your adhesive of choice. That goes on top. And now we're going to take a little piece of ribbon and I have our mini ruffled red ribbon and this piece is about six or seven inches and it's going to go underneath that lip and it's going to come around and tie in a knot on one side or the other and I'm doing all of mine on the left. I'm going to create a square knot which is my left over my right so the right side of the ribbon not my hands so left over right through and under and then you want to do the reverse then right over left through and under and that's going to give us a really nice square knot where our ends are going to come off to either side so it'll align with the ribbon and we're going to wait to cut those off so then some of my liquid glue I just want liquid glue here so that it will set up and hold it in place really well I'm going to straighten that out a little bit give a tiny little bit of glue more and then you'll just need to let that sit up, uh, set up a little bit. So squish it together. If you have an alligator clip and you wanna be working, you could certainly put your alligator clip on there to hold it in place. Because that ribbon is just a little bit thicker, it's going to want to uh, stick up perhaps. It's actually not too bad. Okay, so that's the main part. Now we need to do our chocolates to go inside. So I have two other pieces of the designer paper and I'm gonna decide which one. This one might be a little bit busy by the time I'm done. I've got a lot going on. So I think I want my green to be showing. So you pull in your Mercy chocolates and I've just got two here. And you want to take your stamp and seal but I actually would like to use my seal plus here and my seal plus is just going to be a little bit um, stronger so if I want my green to be showing I'm going to put my Mercy chocolate upside down and I'm going to fold this over there should be enough that it'll fold over here so I need to put my adhesive onto my green so that's the way that I do it. You could also put your adhesive on the other side, but this is the way I like it because then it's away from me, um, meaning that the adhesive is furthest away. I think I said my adhesive is going to be away from me. I actually want it to be facing me. So I've got my adhesive right here, and now I'm gonna turn it over and have my adhesive go on this side. And I'm fold that up first, and then pull this over. Get it as tight as you can. And I can see where my adhesive should have been a little bit closer to the edge. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, because I want my, um, I want my Mercy chocolates to sit in there really well. And so they, now I'm gonna make sure that I have my, I do. Um, I just wanna make sure that I had my lines going the same way. The Mercy chocolates are just a tiny bit loose in there. So I put a glue dot in the old, the other ones I did. Now I'm just going to, so you know, that one doesn't show any, but there's a little bit of a stick there. So then they pop in here and that one maybe will stick right down. 
that one beside it. So it's got just a little bit of wiggle room there. So you can have that almost like chiclets if you want, or you can put a little bit of glue. And I think I am gonna put a glue dot. So let's just grab a glue dot and put that on the back. Grab a glue dot for this guy, just put it on the back and then place those in. Try and get your papers maybe to match up. Okay, and now we're going to do the greeting on the outside. For the greeting, I'm going to be using the wishing you a Merry Christmas. I could also go for the sending you peppermint kisses, but I think I'm doing the wishing you a Merry Christmas, but we're only going to do the Merry Christmas. So I wanna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna take just a piece of uh, regular cello tape. I've already got it on my block and I'm going to put that right over top of what I don't want to stamp. So the sending you a, uh. and then I'm going to ink up my Merry Christmas. Take a piece of scrap basic white. Now the real trick here is make sure you take off that tape before you stamp it down. Okay, so just stamp that straight down see I have just a tiny little bit right there but that's okay I can always put a, uh, a rhinestone on there and then we're going to use our double oval punch and we're going to punch that out so there's the small oval and I'm going to take some more of the designer paper so the same designer paper and I'm just using scraps now so I'm just going to Whatever I have, I'm going to punch that large double oval and that's going to sit on top of there. So a little bit of our seal right on top. I should probably move my stamp pad. I'll get my fingers in there. there go. And then this is just going to go on here and we're going to decorate it with a couple little things. So I'm going to put that on with dimensionals. So we're getting down to the end of my dimensionals here. So make sure your dimensionals go more towards the middle if you're going to use the oval because it does extend over the side just a little bit. So our Merry Christmas is gonna go there, sort of in the middle. Now with some of this paper, there's all kinds of little candies and there is a die. So these are the gingerbread dies that go with the set and there's all kinds of circles. Well, those aren't circles, circles here. And I've used some of the three ones together to cut out some of these shapes. It fits right over top. But if you have some punches, so if you have some little punches, little round punches, and these are older ones that have been retired, um, then you can go right over top. Go right over top and pull out exactly what you want to punch out. So that's a quick way to do that. I do have some that are already cut out here. And I think I need a little one. I think I just need a little one, maybe up here. That's gonna cover up that little dot that I have. Maybe something like that. And perhaps a big guy down at the bottom. He might be a little too big. Let's see, are these all the same? I've got that one. Let me do one more here. I think I'm gonna do the inside of this one. So you can always cut out just what you want. That's a little bit better. Okay, so a little bit of glue here. we go and of course we have to have a few little gems on there to give it a little bit of bling so I've got the wonderful gems and so we are going to use some of the red ones my take your pick tool and I think we're going to go right maybe in the middle of this green one and we'll do right in the middle of this guy and then one more, perhaps just, where should we put that? One more, maybe just right down here. So we've got a little cluster of three there. And then the last thing that I wanna do is just trim off the ends of my ribbon. So I like to trim always in a little bit of a diagonal. So there we go, all done.
a cute little project that you can add to your holiday table. Now, if you were doing multiples of these, I would cut everything out, all my my cardstock, all of my designer paper, my ribbon, and then I would do it sort of in batches. So I'm doing 10 of these for our table, and that's not too, too many. If you're doing 50, maybe this isn't the project for you, but they are super, super cute. So if you love this project, please like this video below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you live in Canada and you don't yet have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be your gal. You can find the link to all of the projects and the blog post in the description below. And if you're not yet on my mailing list, why not pop on over to www.designwithjoe.ca and get yourself signed up. I post weekly tips and tricks, all kinds of designs and ideas, and all the latest news in the Stampin' Up! paper crafting world. I'd love to have you join in there. Thanks very much and have a great paper crafting day.